This is a walkthrough of Cinemotion version 2 for UE4. The big difference from previous versions is that you no longer need to manually import cameras from the FBX files. You can apply camera animation directly within the sequencer via these camera animation sequence assets. Once you've finished watching this tutorial video, double click on the Cinemotion map. If you hit play, you'll see the camera moving the viewport. This camera animation is applied via an asset in the sequencer. To view it, just click on the sequencer in the world or double click on the camera level sequence from the content browser. First thing you'll notice is this template animation track. And you can see that a camera animation has already been applied. If you scrub through, you'll see the camera animating. To look through the camera, toggle this button. The advantage of these template sequences is you can quickly browse through camera motion, apply it, blend it, loop it, and edit it much like you would with video. If you want to change the clip, there are a few ways you can do it. You can right click on the current clip and in properties, select one of the others. Also, if you already know the name of the clip you want, you can start typing here and it will narrow that search list. So you can just select from another camera and it will update in the viewport. The other thing you can do if you don't have this template animation track is just delete it, go to track, and all of the animation will always be available to you via this camera animation list. So you just click to apply it and it will add it at your playhead location. So make sure that you move your clip back to frame zero if you want to start there. Another thing you can do is blend clips together. All of the clips are 30 seconds long, but if you need them to last even longer, you can alt drag another one and you'll see this crossfade happen. So that's a great way of blending longer clips and this should work fine for most of the idols. And you can of course blend to a completely different clip. Another thing that you can do at the sequencer level is change the timing. If you go to properties and adjust the time scale to 0.5, it will play back at half speed. These template animations are in local space and will apply additively to wherever the camera is within the world. The only thing to be aware of is that if you want to change the position of the camera while a template animation clip is playing, you must make sure you deactivate it, then move the camera and reactivate the clip, and it will apply additively to that location. The other way of doing it, which I prefer, is just to move the playhead outside of the template animation range. You can also pilot the camera while doing this. And you can see that it will apply to whatever position that your camera is currently in. So this makes it a lot easier to find the framing. Repeating this whole process from scratch, I'll add a Cine camera actor to the world. And I can pilot the camera like usual to wherever I want it. If I open up the sequencer now, I need to add that camera actor to the sequencer. Because I'm only using one camera, I don't need this camera cuts track, so I can delete that. And then again, toggle this button if you're already not looking through the camera. So to add the camera animation, I just add a track here, and under camera animation, all of the assets are available in a list. If you know the name of what you want, you can start typing, and it will narrow down the search for you. And once I add it, you can see that it adds the template animation from wherever my playhead is. So I make sure that I move that back to frame zero if I want it to start right at the beginning. Remember to adjust the out point of your sequence, or if you need a longer clip, you can alt drag this out and uh, use the crossfade function. For now, I'm just going to stick to a single clip. The template animation doesn't actually override any of the camera settings, unlike the old FBX import method, so you can still adjust things in the sequencer and then change the clip and it will retain those settings. Something to note is that you can actually 
pilot the camera with the clip enabled. You'll notice, however, once you move the playhead, it will snap back to its original position. And that's by default because the template animation has a higher priority than the transform track below. If you right click the clip, go to properties and then turn the hierarchical bias to zero, it will now give precedence to the transform track rather than the template animation. The nice thing about this, as long as you stop the playback, you can pilot the camera and then hit play and it will just apply it to wherever the camera position is. So you can find a nice framing quite easily. So that's really important if you want to apply any additional camera animation, for example, adding extra keyframes to the transform track. To demonstrate that, I'll just move the camera into a neutral position. Let's add some additional camera animation to the transform. So say I want the camera to track back a little bit. I'll add a keyframe here, move along, and then add a second keyframe. And you should see that the camera animation is respected and also additively apply the template animation on top. If I set the hierarchical bias back to 100, the default position, you'll see that it's ignoring the transform below. So most of the time I would set that to zero by default. Those template animation sequences actually live in the camera sequences folder. If you click through, you'll see the assets inside. And to use these in any project, you can copy these files out from Explorer or right click and migrate to another project. I've also included the camera source FBX files if you just want the regular keyframes. You can still import the FBX animation by clicking import and choosing the source FBX files. But most of the time, you'll just want to use the camera animation sequences. So the assets themselves are broken into two main types. There's rotation and translation and rotation only. These two folders have the exact same cameras inside, except for the rotation only has the translation component zeroed out. You might want to use this in gameplay, for example, or just to reduce any foreground parallax. Most of the time I use the regular rotation and translation variant. Inside there's two core categories. There's the idols and framing moves. Most of the time you're going to be wanting to use the idols as their general or ambient motion that can be applied to pretty much any situation. The framing moves are a little more specific and contain things like camera pans and tilt ups and reveals. Inside here is the name of the shot. The assets themselves follow this naming convention. We have the shot name and then the letter. The letter is the variant. So we we'll have A, B, C and so forth, which are just different takes of the same camera motion. And then we have this smoothing part of the file name. This is just done for convenience and lets you choose between the raw camera motion at level zero up to heavy smoothing at level four. If you want the shot to feel raw and shaky, you can use a lower smoothing level. Or if you want to make it feel a lot smoother, or almost gimbal like, you can use heavy smoothing at level four. You can of course do this manually on the keyframes if you want to, but this is just done for convenience. And finally, in 427, there's a handy new feature that you can enable by right clicking the template animation sequence and then going to these property multipliers. And you can separately scale the translation and rotation amounts of the motion. So, for example, if I set the translation multiplier to zero, that's going to zero out any translational movement. Or if I set it to 10, that's going to exaggerate it by 10 times. And you can also keyframe this value as well. So here we're keyframing from 10 times the amount to zero. So that's going to scale down to no translation at all. So let me enable the rotation one and I'm going to delete the translation multiplier. So you can see the difference. If we leave it on one, that's the default. If I set that to zero, that's going to take all of the rotation out. Or if I set it to 10, that's going to accentuate it 10 times. So you can really fine tune the motion that you're looking for. And you can also keyframe this as well. So this is dying down from 10 times, settling down to no rotation at all. So this gives you a lot of fine grain control to get exactly what you're looking for.